I feel that there ought to be a way to make the presentation thing be the notes for everybody or be the default. Hi, Ari. Hello. <clears throat> How many kids you got now, Ari? Six, seven? <laughs> Luckily, only two, but those are definitely keeping me busy. Oh, okay. Yeah, the younger one just turned one year old yesterday. And this is technically my I miss, last I miss playing with Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> I suppose I could just get it out and play by myself, but, you know. You, you, you can do this and different stuff with public if you have a kid along. Yeah, like don't go to a park as a single man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been climbing there in many places. I wouldn't do it that, otherwise. There are parks that say um, something to the effect of adults need to be accompanied by a child. <laughs> nice. I was thinking if everyone realized we're starting the session at a bit odd time. Yeah, because we were going to be right after core and I thought, you know, people might need to run to the bathroom. And so mm -hmm. that's why I added 10 minutes also because I was going to be there. Um, but um, anyway, that just should mean they show up 10 minutes early. Or 20 right? minutes late. Or they could show up 20 minutes late. <laughs> Yeah. So where's Nicholas? Yeah. He should be just uh, down the hall from me or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm chatting on, on Teams. He says his Mideco is not working. Um, so, but he's oh. trying to get up. Right. He, he, oh, he said that you can you can get going um, without okay, well, him. We'll I guess when um, Torla, when uh, I guess also is back. Yeah, we're also missing my Michael Coster. Do you have him on chat somewhere? Uh, teams. Is that Cisco Teams or Microsoft Teams? I, yeah, I have Videl, but <clears throat> not Coster. Um, Nicholas I said that the medical link wasn't working. I wonder, because there were the two different invites, if the other one has oh. a broken link.
Yeah, apparently if you specify a city when you ask for a virtual interim now, it thinks you actually meant an in person. And um, my impression from the web interface is that you need to uh, specify, you, you are encouraged to specify the city so that it will pick a time zone for you. Um, but that's apparently not the case. Okay, so we have Nicholas here. Nice to have Coster. So I bet he had the wrong link. Nicholas had the wrong link. Um, I'm actually, so, so Michael Costa is actually yes. in the W3C thing description meeting at the moment. So oh. maybe one join later. I'm in that meeting as well. <laughs> so oh, when does it end? That's why I'm not. When does that meeting end? Hi guys, Nicholas here, can you hear me? Hi Jan. Yeah, sorry about the mess here. So, Jan, did you say when this thing description meeting ends? Sorry, could you repeat? Um, being a participant in two meetings at the same time is. Uh, yeah, when different. does your other meeting end? Also, since it takes a long time to turn mics on and off through Meet Echo, I suggest you use the mute button at the bottom right and just leave your mic uh, request open um, unless you're very concerned that your browser might you know, leak audio channels. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. Uh, or? Uh, one of these days. OK, well, let's start. Um, and um, perhaps we'll. Get Mike Coster's um, top of the hour or something. Um, okay, so uh, welcome to this um, virtual interim meeting um, for the ASDF group. Um, and uh, I guess I'll say that we did ask for a time slot for uh, IETF 118 in Prague in the end. Um, and um, but this meeting is really about today about getting the current document ready for um, to be published. We went through working group last call. Um, uh, let me. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so let me just go through the agenda. Any changes to the agenda? All right, well, I will show the obligatory note well. Uh, just to remind you that there are certain processes at the IETF, and this is an official meeting, and so the note well applies, uh, particularly relating to intellectual property, um, and that this meeting is recorded, um, and um, that uh, we ask you to um, act professionally and be nice to each other. and. Uh, there are a number of BCPs here, and if you have any questions, you can talk to working group chairs or to the area directors. Okay, so logistics for meeting. So uh, I will attempt to take some notes into the note uh, taking tool. Um, um, and um, that's about it. I would suggest that you just click on the microphone icon in the upper left to request microphone status and then mute yourself with the microphone in the lower right, which is about 10 times faster for muting and unmuting. And we're a very small group, and I don't think we need to observe um, the uh, mic queuing line for that reason. Um, any other questions or concerns? I'll probably turn my video off just to uh, avoid. Uh, uh, eating bandwidth for no reason. Um, anything else that anyone wants to add about the meeting? 
Okay, so let's move on. So we did a working group last call, uh, started in early September. I think it was like the fourth. Um, it's all in my slides. It's all in your slides. Yeah. Okay. Well, and it finished last weekish or ten days ago, and we got a couple of reviews. And uh, I guess I'll pass it on to Karsten. It's all in his slides. So let me see here. Stop screen share and share preloaded slides share and then i can give him the control by clicking on that great okay um yeah so um as michael said uh, we had a working group last call of the base sdf um document uh, version or revision dash 15 um actually and uh, we we actually called this interim to be able to process uh, these uh, comments uh, so the dash 15 was submitted on on september 4th before i went on vacation and the working plus call went until the 20th um, and uh, we uh, got one review but a very good one by, by christo holmberg who actually took the position, the perspective of a new reader. So, so he kind of read this, uh, forgetting everything he knew about SDF and, and tried to find out whether the document is good enough. And uh, he found quite a few um, uh, things that, that uh, can get better. Um, so we set up a number of, of issues that, that are on the GitHub repository. I forgot to link that. And uh, we also had a number of pull requests. We still have three issues, the blue ones um, that that uh, don't have pull requests yet, but that it should be uh, possible to get pull requests out there uh, during the rest of the uh, week. Uh, so we uh, actually maybe can uh, submit a dash 16 based on this um, uh, later this week. But let me first, before we go into the, 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 the timing, um, let me first go through what, what we actually um, did. So first of all, Krista pointed out that the um, language wasn't always very consistent. Uh, so we, we had uh, three uh, issues and, and pull requests that actually addressed that language. The first item was to to uh, work even harder on actually using the term object only when we talk about SDF objects. So that that's an unfortunate uh, collision. Um, at the time we 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 started using this terminology, we didn't have uh, JSON schema org uh, objects. So this this was still a little bit uh, less of a problem. Um, but uh, now we have the problem full on, and so uh, pull request 119 tries to make sure that we properly separate the JSON objects by calling them maps uh, and the SDF uh, objects um, and have the language in place that, that explains all this. So this was 109 or pull request 119. Uh, 112 or pull request 121 uh, was about the same thing with the word thing versus SDF thing, except they are different in this case. So SDF object is the, the same thing as an object, but an SDF thing is not a thing. So we were using the term thing as, as a general term for uh, the kind of system that this uh, specification is trying to, to help you model. Um, so um, we, we, hi, Michael. Um, so we um, actually uh, split thing and SDF thing. Um, and uh, we made sure that we have uh, fewer uh, references to Internet of Things because other people are calling the Internet of Things operation and technology or something else. So uh, we, we, we don't want to. Uh, uh, run into these artificial fences uh, generated by this terminology. Um, so we, we are not no longer saying that this is for IoT, uh, but we are just saying it's it's for things. And uh, 
um, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that we call the aggregate uh, uh, structure SDF thing, but th that's where we are. We probably don't want to change this at, at this point. Um, and we also remove text that, that actually um, skirts around the issue of thingness. Uh, so let, let think to thing research group do that. And uh, uh, we, we can actually live without an exact definition of what a thing is. But the, the important thing that is said about a thing is that it's physical, it's a physical object, and it has an interface to a network that also allows to interact with it. Um, so that was that. And finally, we had this unfortunate term SDF file. And we, we don't really want to talk about file systems and things like that. So we, we replaced this by SDF document uh, throughout. And uh, we, we still have one issue open that they have to add this to the terminology section as well. So that, that was a significant uh, set of improvements based on Christos' comments. Um, we added a little bit of missing detail that, that uh, uh, Christa noticed. Um, so uh, in the definition of an action, uh, we didn't have the, the a pointer to the idiom of returning an action resource uh, for, for an ongoing action. Uh, so this is now in there without actually binding it to co-op where, where it's the, the usual thing to do. So this is described as a more general um, uh, idiom. And it also points to the uh, SDF type link uh, document as an example of how SDF base, base SDF has to be extended to be able to fully describe these action resources. So right now we can only say that there should be, that, that the interaction returns an, an action resource, but we cannot say right now what, what uh, that action resource is going to have for uh, affordances and, and with something like SDF type link, uh, we can do that. But this is outside the, the base uh, spec at this point. Um, a pretty important uh, detail is uh, the the way that SDF is planned uh, to uh, to evolve, um, and uh, th there were some some pretty obscure references to SDF versions and and so on, and this is now fixed in pull request one twenty five. So first of all, we have a name for the state of evolution that, that is uh, crystallized in the base RFC. We now just call this base SDF. And uh, then uh, we talk about extensions that can be made either through the extension points that ba base SDF already provides in the form of registries where you can, can define additional functionality or by actually doing another document that may even use the, the feature quality from the uh, info block. And uh, finally, the, the definition of an affordance um, assumes that you have internalized the, that definition from, what's his name, Norman, um, the, the guy who defined <laughs> affordances in, in uh, 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 human computer interaction. Um, and uh, this is now a little bit more explicit. So, so it will be less opaque for people who are not used to this terminology. And the third thing, well, uh, there are always a few editorial chores. So we, we now have the, the references to JSON schema org uh, sorted out. We reference four different documents, the base and the validation spec for draft four and uh, draft uh, seven each. Um, so this should now also be uh, cons consistently referenced, which of the four documents we want to reference. Um, number 14 was about the, the connotation of state, which often brings up the term state machine in, in the heads of people who think about um, uh, protocols and uh, state is now defined in the terminology entry that, that uses it. 
Um, we still have two chores that have to be done. One is uh, actually that there is a pretty lax use of the term instance, and we have to get rid of that. Um, not of the term necessarily, but the, uh, of the laxness in, in using it. And time was not sufficient to do that. that that's actually a significant surgery. The term is used about 20 times um, in, in the document, and we actually may have to invent uh, a couple more terms to, to make this uh, more precise. So this is for the rest of the week to do. And th there is a minor item that uh, it's probably a good idea to have terminology entries for SDF model and, and SDF uh, document. So these are two to-dos. And then we have a third to-do. Um, there were several comments on, on my attempts to, to fix those references to SDF 1.0 and 1.1. That we maybe should completely clean the the document of all these these references to earlier drafts. Um, so we would clean it in the text, but we would also clean up the CDDL, which of course makes it easier to understand. So uh, I think there are some good reasons to do this now. Um, this has all remnants. I'm not entirely sure we won't occasionally say something like earlier versions of earlier drafts of this uh, specification did this uh, because it, it maybe is sometimes necessary to uh, understand that we are we have chosen not to do something that we, we did earlier. Um, but I think that the general uh, objective here should be to uh, get rid of SDF 1.0 and 1.1. And I think uh, that's something that uh, we as a working group uh, should discuss. Is that uh, something we want to do now? So is the uh, is the proposal that this thing going forward and being published is SDF 1.0 now? No. Or it's is it 1.2? There is, is no base? version number. It's okay. base SDF. So in a bunch of things in um, one of the pull requests that I just happened to browse 116, I guess, or it's a pull request 125, um, it says a bunch of things where it used to say an SDF 1.0, now it says an SDF draft 1.0. It says that repeatedly. Um, and so that's the kind of thing you're talking about that would go yes. away or? Yes. Um, so we wouldn't have a version number. Uh, right. In the future, we would refer to it as just SDF, RFC, blah, blah, blah. No, it's and... base SDF. We, we introduced the term base SDF, okay. which is what this document defines. And all future, uh, what might be called versions, are actually simply extensions of this. And okay. these extensions either use the existing extension points or use the, the feature mechanism that is already defined, but currently doesn't have a single so defined If we were to publish feature. a new RFC in five years, um, a, you know, BIS, what would, we, would, what would we call this older version then at that point? Base SDF? So if we were to publish a, a, a BIS, then it would be just the new SDF, and this one would still be base SDF. Yes. Okay. I'm not crazy about that part, but um, I can live with it. Yeah, I, I think it's good we get rid of the 1.0 and 1.1s. I mean, they were, of course, very useful during the development of the spec, but I can imagine five years down the road, looking back, it would be more confusing to talk about them than, than helpful. Well, I, I think, think this it'll be change makes a lot of sense. I think it'll be confusing for reviewers if you know we talk about these previous versions that they don't really see anymore. So I think that's very valuable. Um, probably need to have a one sentence somewhere that says, you know, drafts talked about 1.0, 1.1, but we do not use, but from this point on, it's simply called base SDF and enough said, right? But yeah, yeah it sounds they're, fine they're, to me. There already is some text in there, the, the text that defines base SDF at the end of the introduction. And um, yeah, we, yep. we may want to extend that when we delete other stuff. But uh, I think the, the basic idea how to do this is sound. So the assessment is that there will be no need to 
refer to, I mean, base ACF will, will help us for many years. And then if we do new SDF for the five years, that's sufficient. There's like no need to do one zero, two zero, three zero uh, or so. Yeah, so but my model here is CBOR, which, which was defined in RFC 7049. And uh, when we did uh, RFC 8949, um, we didn't see a need to actually version uh, mm. CBOR. So th th there are some new things in 8949 that, that you actually can use, um, but uh, th this is th th there is no versioning on, on the uh, actual CBOR data structures being uh, interchange. Mm. And I think we, we will have a very similar uh, structure here as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I would, uh, yeah, there are, I guess, the pros and cons, but I, I guess getting rid of these old version numbers is a good thing because that will only confuse people because they would assume that this would be SDF10 and then it's something else. So I, I think this would be okay. And, and technically, the new features quality should take away the usual reasons to even make new versions. And of course, one thing what we may want to be careful if we decide to do a feature that lumps together and a set of other features, it will be very tempting to call that a version. Maybe at that time you want to use a different word for it <laughs> to avoid that confusion or decide version is the right word. Um, mm -hmm. But really, we don't need to use these <clears throat> classical versioning schemes. Michael? There. Okay, it took a little while to unmute. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> somewhat jokingly, we could, Adi, we could call that a profile. <laughs> but... Um, I think what we could explain the um, <clears throat> the change management um, philosophy in a few sentences to help people understand, you know, why and, and what's happening. But um, <clears throat> a feature that you know a, a system that uses a particular set of features isn't necessarily compatible with the system that uses a different set of features. But um, the features being clearly identified and enumerated gives the developer a chance to get whatever level of compatibility they want. Um, so I guess, yeah, in the sense of maybe they are sort of profiles, but we're probably not going to name them. It would be nice to just have it always to be just a list of features. But um, yeah, I think that's I think that's what we could do is probably a few sentences to explain maybe some of the reasoning behind, you know, why we're doing this uh, this way. Yeah, th there are some sentences in the introduction. Um, so if, if you look into the current, I'm not even sure that the current editor's copy is generated. Um, but if you look into the introduction, uh, you can uh, see some text. And if you would like to extend this text, uh, Please uh, make a comment, make an issue. Good. Um, you got one more slide, right? Yes. So what's the, the plan? The, as I said, the plan is to address the, the three to-dos that are on this uh, slide set. Um, and, and now uh, you can delete the if desired. Um, submit a dash 16 on that. And then Ari pointed out that uh, now that we, we have a, a much more readable version of this, uh, maybe we actually want to ask a few people from the ecosystems uh, to put in additional uh, reviews. So this this is a little bit hard to control with respect to the, the time it needs, but uh, it, it may be worthwhile to actually uh, spend this additional couple of weeks or so um, just to, to get more of these uh, new reader perspectives in there, which turned out to be so useful uh, with uh, Krista. So, 
Um, the, the previous version of this slide just said submit oh. dash 16 and publish to ISG. Uh, but the question is whether we want to do one more targeted review round and submit dash 17 based on that. Uh, um, isn't it primarily kind of, as you said, like a review logistics issue, right? Who would, yes. who could we get sort of friendly people who could review this within reasonable time? Um, I don't know if Simon would be interested, for instance. Or, for instance, or, uh, that, that's the first name that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, somebody from OMA, perhaps? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I, I, I think we can perhaps? solicit them. And, I, and I, of course, we shouldn't build a dependency there. Um, but like, if we don't get in reasonable light, we just go forward. Um, but I think it would be great to get them. Of course, the challenge there is uh, the logistics because many of those don't have, you know, data tracker accounts and, and uh, are not <laughs> signed yeah. up on either mailing lists. So we may need to do some relaying and, and such. Um, but I think that would be, that would be a perfect time to request those like final uh, reviews on this um, specification. Yep, I agree. Just get them to post it to the mailing list and uh, the chairs will prove yeah, we'll moderate them. Yeah, or they could put could put it on GitHub. Many people who implement this stuff are used to using GitHub. Yeah, but I think we want to get the review content into the mailing list. Yeah, um, that's one for of that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't say they can't submit it by GitHub, but if they do, then we should probably copy and paste it. Yes. Yeah. How much time do you need, or do we think would be? Obviously, if we can, I mean, if we manage to resolve these open open uh, issues, and you do a sixteen, how much time, additional time, do we need to get these more reviewers? Um, two weeks, or? Well, I would say ten days. Ten days um, to get the next rev seventeen. Yeah. I've, I've, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. After dash 16, try to collect more reviews uh, within 10 days. Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, we need to process those. So this will probably take another week. Yeah. Um, so a, a week for 16. Or OK. And then so starting next week, we can ask these people to review it. We're probably going to have to unicast them. Directly. We can actually ask them. I mean, we can, we can start asking you know, already, right? Yeah. And then to be ready, do you know, please make time for, it would be super great if, uh, you know, people have time to do this. Uh, yeah, so it's they probably can, best yeah. to give them the impulse when Dash 16 is actually available, so. Okay, oh, that's also um, way, yeah. That tends to work a little better. So let, let's get Dash 16 done by Monday or so. Um, at those 10 days, um, and um, wait a minute, where does that leave us? So Monday is October 2nd. 10 days from that is October 12th. And uh, then we would have a few days. Uh, when is the deadline? Hey, look. Why is that not in my calendar? Hmm. Okay, 23rd. Um, so yeah. uh, we probably shouldn't uh, shouldn't do a submission on the 23rd because that, that's always hectic and, and error prone. Uh, so we should do that a little bit earlier. But um, so if we uh, say 2nd to 12th is the, the additional external review uh, period, we should try to submit it by the 19th. And uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be offline for the next several of days anyway. 
Um, so 19 is probably a good date for the dash 17. Okay. And of course, having a okay. Shepard report ready by this point in time would uh, then accelerate the rest. The community reviewers could be um, <clears throat> anybody, right? Yes. Anyone who's familiar with the subject matter. Yeah, they, they probably should be aware that this is the, the end of a three-year development uh, period, so we are not going to, to completely change the document at this point in time, but well, uh, yeah, review is a good point. I was, I was specifically thinking about tapping some of the original 1DM people who are going to be familiar but may not be really caught up with the latest developments, um, you know, like the um, specifically maybe some of the folks from Google or maybe maybe not exactly those folks, but um, carefully selected uh, uh, set of reviewers that, you know, if we needed more. <clears throat> Yeah, that, that, that's a good idea. Uh, um, um, so, MK, can are, are you going to then be able to, um, are you going to, are you saying you'll take, you'll take responsibility for doing that, Mike yes. Foster? I am. Yes, I am. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, anything else to talk about? Well, at some point we need to talk about all those other uh, documents that are out there. Um, uh, some of this talking is actually happening in the uh, 1DM uh, call. So for instance, on, on next Monday, we will have a 1DM call, hopefully discussing the Bluetooth integration and the, the things that uh, come from uh, there. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, we we need to think about what we want to do with all those other documents. Uh, we can do that in Prague. Uh, yeah, but we okay. also could uh, try to formulate an opinion. Uh, well, I, I, I'd like to have some questions. Uh, like some ideas about what we might do. They could be bad ideas or good ideas or just ideas. Um, and um, um, and then, you know, that would let people think about what the possibilities are before Prague. Yeah, would it work to do an interim? The last week? We, of, we, 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 we could. Um, I think that's frowned on to do it in the week before ITF. Is that what you're thinking about? Well, I was uh, thinking in the week of the internet draft deadline. So late, later that week oh. after the internet draft deadline. We probably can do that. So you're thinking about... 25th, October 25th. the same time works for me but what about the, the thing description meetings sorry what about the what the the thing description meetings that, that kept jan and michael okay well then so later yeah that's why i'm asking michael uh, um, we expect to change the time um, but we <laughs> I, we haven't done that yet, so it's probably best to avoid for October even. But yeah, later the the actual uh, nine nine a.m. Pacific would be perfect, but that might be a little. Well, that's 
should be okay. There's 1800 Sorry. in. What, what time did you just say? 1800 Pacific? No, <laughs> nine, 9 Pacific. 9 a.m. Pacific. Okay, yeah. all right. 1800 Central Europe. Yeah, okay. 25th, so. <clears throat> 25th is still the usual distance between Europe and uh, the US. The next week is a week of confusion. Okay, so um, that's two weeks before our ITF. Okay, well, if 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 uh, we can we can schedule it, then I'm happy to do that. I guess Core has done that, so I'll schedule one for the twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Uh, twelve. Sorry, well, for me it's twelve. Nine a.m. We just said nine a.m. Yeah. So sixteen hundred world time. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. So, so and then the intent is to, yes, the intent of that yes, meeting is to discuss the plans, right? And and the, kind of the future plans, so to speak. Yeah, that that's the idea. Is I think to come up to to have some proposals for each of the documents that there, and so the idea is that we would come into the ITF meeting with. Um, some actual proposals for what would be in the charter and what would out not be in the charter mm. or some actual, you know, conflict about what it's going on. Right. Yep. That's cool. Okay, great. So that was the questions you were referring to Michael earlier. Uh, me. Yes, so exactly. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, we, we could do a very quick brain dump right now to see if we kind of have a rough idea, at least within this group. Because to, to me, kind of the, the obvious ones are, are, are the links and relations that are already somewhat refined. But then what we're missing doubling completely on is on the instances. And that seems to be like <laughs> the most common topic that I see on my radar. Um, well, and that's that's of course a whole bigger question: how you even design the feature? It's not just a single quality potentially. So, is is the link that I just posted to the notes? Is that the whole picture, or are we missing some additional documents we should be looking at? Um, is that the list of documents that's everything um, that has ASDF and the file name? Ah, uh, yes, protocol bindings too. Very good point. <laughs> or mapping files. Yeah, so the, but, there we haven't determined whether this is two different things or the same thing. That's right. But even instances have a quality of sort of being either either a, another refinement on SDF as a language extension where, or uh, as a binding to some other uh, kind of, you know, JSON or something like that. And I've experimented with both and I think there's some, some interesting choices to make about instances. But part of instances is related a lot to bindings and mappings. Mapping compact link document relations. So I think that the, I think the ASDF um, document list has all those documents already on it. There aren't well, any, I'm saying there aren't, there aren't,
Yeah, I'm not sure that, that uh, this is possible, but um, a, a good objective might be to actually uh, respin these uh, four documents uh, with a view of uh, how they could become uh, work items of, of a rechartered uh, working group. You know, for folks with more experience with these recharters and so on, uh, would those, you know, this amount of work be, you know, too little, too much, not appropriate? I mean, how, how compared to other recharters? You know, it's, it's obviously some work to be done, but it's not an infinite amount, uh, not a huge amount. Uh, or can we do it with a current charter with some creative reading of it I, I i would say that it doesn't really matter um um that um it's never i mean maybe it all fits in the current charter but that's something we would have to 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 look at um but um i think it's at the point where where having done this document the next question would be that our ad would ask us okay you're done you're shutting down so regardless of whether um, it fits in the current charter or not, we have to make a decision that we're continuing. Okay. And that's a conscious decision. And I, our AD has to agree with us that we're continuing. Yeah. Um, and if it requires some minor, minor charter rechartering text, then that's probably not a big deal, although it requires an approval process. So it takes an extra month, but um, uh, I think it's the conversation about what are we doing that, that matters. Yep. I mean, that's fine. And I don't think it matters. Right? I mean, we might recharter to pro work on one, uh, one other document only, and that's okay. Or mm, all of okay. them. Or... Right. Good. So right now the, the charter is pretty focused on, on developing SDF into a standard flex specification. So I'm pretty sure that we will have to do a rechartering. A process, but of course we don't have to to stand still while that happens. If we have an agreement of what we want to do. Good. Okay. Then we'll talk. Yeah. Um, may, maybe about. one more class of documents here. Um, I guess just the. Uh, for ecosystems that want to uh, register ecosystem uh, quality namespaces uh, and wish to do those as RFCs, I guess those things should be in, in scope. So for example, I'm thinking uh, I'm OMA, I, uh, object and resource IDs. So OMA could register the OMA namespace for that. I guess they could also do it as, in an OMA spec, um, but if it would make sense to do it as an, as an RFC, and that probably should be in the in the scope. I heard you say quality namespaces, but you must have meant some other word. So, so document well, required. The, the, is like, or, yeah. the term in the document is quality name prefixes. So we would have an OMA colon that. object ID or something like that. So we, we already have a registry for those. And, and, uh, and the registry is, is what's the IANA considerations? Expert review. Okay, so they don't need a document. They just need to ask nicely. Yeah, there, there are some additional re, uh, instructions to the expert. So, so uh, I'm not sure I should read those out loud right now but the the intention is that an organization that that actually registers a prefix also has a point where they will collect uh, the the quality names that they actually use so with the objectives I of stability and transparency I don't, I don't remember that part but anyway uh, i'll guess i'll find when i read it from top to bottom um Okay, that's cool. So, Ari, what you're saying is that those guys, those other entities, probably um, 
um, those other entities could probably start is what you're saying, thinking about what they want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wondering like what, what will be the de facto way of doing it. Uh, I guess maybe, maybe the most, most likely outcome might actually be that they, you know, whatever organization is their own specifications. But ha having a way, a way to have public reference for those qualities, I think it's very useful. And um, perhaps an organization that doesn't, that puts up all of their documents behind a paywall, for them to do it an RFC actually might be a better option. And um, would be sad if our charter prevents that. Um, I guess that's kind of my thinking here. Well, that, that would normally be an independent submission. So if, if OMA wants to have full change control over those, which uh, I think is what they would want to do, um, then, uh, yeah, they, they would uh, submit this as an RFC if, if uh, things go well. Um, but they may want to use the ISE and, and not this working group. I mean, we sure okay. would like to discuss it in this working group, but in the end, OMA would need to have change control. Indeed. Yeah, that, that would work. Thanks. Yeah, and, and, and with OMA, I don't think it's not an issue because OMA specs are actually public in the end. Um, so, but, but yeah, that's a good, good point with the independent stream that could be used if needed. So it doesn't need to be a ASDF document. Then we may want to do some informational best practice. Here's how to use these stock documents. And I guess would, those would naturally fall within the new charter. Because there, there is a lot of a lot of extra knowledge that is not in the base specification because it really depends on how the specific ecosystems are using this base specification. Um, it might be useful to document eventually. And maybe do an informational RFC. Yeah, the ISG is, is pretty wary of, of informational, how should I say, weary. Uh, of informational RFCs, so they, they actually uh, sent out an ISG statement a couple of weeks ago that they really don't want to do uh, too many informational RFCs. Um, so um, a document that actually looks at how this is used in practice also could go into the research group. Mm. That's a good point. Thanks. Then I guess the other items of business. Some I... I'm not sure if I caught that last thing. No, just, say, just saying. You know, I, I think I think we have an we have an idea of the set of documents. Okay. We want to go forward with. Do we still need another virtual interim then? I guess the to... how to spin those documents to that point. so I, I think that yeah, we need it. to talk about those documents at 118 as part of the rechartering process that doesn't mean we need to go deep into them but we need to know how they fit into the rest of the process that needn't occupy you know a whole hour um shouldn't 20 minutes um so you know two or three slides at most on each um but um, I, I think we also need to make sure that we are figuring out uh, what other people. We probably need to have a 10-minute presentation on SDF 
base SDF. Is it SDF base? I don't know anymore. Base um, SDF. Base SDF. We probably need to have a 10 minute presentation on that, but maybe we don't need to do that at the beginning of the meeting. Maybe we can do that, you know, near the end of the meeting. Um, so that we can get the real business of the chartering out over. But I mean, I don't know. It depends on, we expect people to read the document before they get there. Um, it's a question of how many other interested new parties do we get uh, given that. We also should probably make sure the agenda is posted well in advance um, so people know what's going on. Um, and then, you know what, let me ask the other question um maybe i there's some conflicts that um that we should um now view list of time lot slot requests apparently i can't no oh, it's doing it's working uh karsten so i need to stop your slides yep uh change deck close deck yes no um okay so uh, i'm well, this is what I tell me if there's some other conflicts here that I've missed. Um, we asked not to be on Friday. Is there anything else you can think of that it's really critical or you think that will overlap? I don't know, IoT ops maybe. I don't know if I can add that to this. No, I can't say. I have to ask to amend. That's fine. So uh, anything other than that? Um, any other participant conflicts? Yeah, I was going to mention Jason Path and Sedate because th these are getting in the way, but I think both of them are not meeting. Are not meeting. Okay, well, I'll just. Anything else? All right, well, I'm going to declare this meeting closed then. Great. Very good. Thank you for Thank having you. this useful hour. Thank you, guys. Thank you for. Okay, I'll set up the, 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 the 25th um, later this afternoon. Thank you. Okay, have a good evening, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.